Today I am reviewing the Rapido Trains HO Scale General Electric C40-8M locomotive. The prototype C40-8M is a six axle diesel locomotive built by the General Electric Company from 1990 to 1994. It is the Canadian variant of the General Electric C40-8 locomotive. It is also known as the Dash 840CM or simply referred to as the Canadian Dash 8 because they were the only GE Dash 8 series locomotives built firsthand for Canadian railway companies. A total of 84 units were built, 55 for Canadian National, 26 for BC Rail, and 3 for the Quebec North Shore and Labrador Railway. Most of these locomotives are still used in mainline freight service with the Canadian National as of 2017. The retail price of Rapido's model is $174.95 Canadian dollars for the DC version and $264.95 for the DCC sound version. The retailer discount is typically around 20% for these models. Sound equipped models include an ESU Log Sound Select DCC decoder. The model is part of Rapido's budget product line, known as the Prime Mover series, which means it sacrifices some of the details in order to keep the prices low. The model comes in six different paint schemes, three of which are original schemes and three repaints. The original schemes are CN Sergeant Stripes, CN North America, and BC Rail Red, White, and Blue. The repaint schemes are the regular CN scheme, the CN website scheme, and also the BC Rail repaints in CN colors. My examples of the model are Canadian National 2400 and 2435. The 2400 is painted in the CN.ca website scheme, and it is a representation of the prototype from the year 2010 onwards. The 2435, on the other hand, is painted in its as-delivered CN North America scheme, and it is a representation of the prototype from 1992 onwards. The 2400 is an early production variant of the C40-8M. It has a bell mounted on the cab and three cluster class lights above the number boards. The 2435 is a later production variant, which means there is no bell on the cab and it has two cluster class lights above the number boards. The BC Rail units which are not shown in this video, have a pair of rock lights on the bottom of the pilot, which is to be installed by the user. In addition, some BC Rail units have a window on the front door. This window was not separately tooled on the model, and it is represented by a pad printed window. The battery box area is also slightly different depending on the locomotive. The CN units have a bulge here, and the BC Rail units do not. This was done on the Rapido model. The CN units have a 3 chime Nathan K3L horn, while the BC Rail units have a 5 chime K5H. The 5 chime horn was not done on the model in order to save costs. Lastly, the BC Rail units have a double lens rear headlight, while the CN units have a single lens. This was also not done on the Rapido model. All BC Rail models have the CN style single lens rear headlight. The C40-8M is visually similar to other CN locomotive designs from the 1980s. It has a four-piece window Canadian cab and a full-width cow body, with a tapered section immediately behind the cab to enhance rear visibility. The locomotive has tall stock ditch lights, which are only found on locomotives in Canada. The locomotive also rides on the Fosco trucks, as opposed to Adirondack or General Steel Castings trucks on the American versions. The model features separately applied handrails and grab irons, windshield wipers, Sinclair antenna, mirrors, sunshades, cab bell, and horn. The model does not have MU cables, air hoses, underbody piping, or separately applied etch metal grating on the steps and vents. These components have been left out in order to keep the cost of the model down. The lighting functions that do work are the headlights, number boards, and ditch lights. The class lights are pad printed and they do not function. Class light panels are included as detail parts if you wish to install them. The wheels are engaged. The couplers, however, are slightly low at the front and very low at the back. The back coupler is low enough to cause operational problems as the trip pin is sagging past the railhead. The locomotive weighs 511 grams or one pound and two ounces for my American friends, which is not bad for a locomotive this size, but not good either especially for a full-body car unit. 
I personally would have liked the locomotive to be a little heavier, at around at least 600 to 650 grams. The heavier the locomotive is, the more pulling power it will have. Drawbar pull is 88 grams, or 3.1 ounces, which is pretty good considering how light it is. The minimum speed at the factory default settings is 1.2 scale miles per hour. If you do the automatic back EMF calibration using CV54, the minimum speed will be 0.8 scale miles. The maximum speed is a whopping 84 scale miles per hour, which is insanely fast, but if you ever want to pull a passenger train with your Dash 8, rest assured that the speed will be there. Sound and equipped locomotives have controllable lighting and sound functions in DCC mode. Lighting functions as follows. F0 turns on the front headlight regardless of the direction. F6 turns on the ditch lights. F7 turns the ditch lights off and dims the headlight. F12 is switching mode, which turns on both the front and rear lights to dim. Sound functions are as follows. F8 turns on the prime mover. F9 is the iconic Dash 8 air compressor sound and F3 is the full throttle function, which holds the locomotive speed so that you can rev up or rev down the prime mover. F4 is the dynamic brake, which does not work when the locomotive is not moving. F1 is the bell, F2 is the horn. You can adjust CV48 to change the horn and the bell. The default horn is the CN3 chime. Add 1 to CV48 to change it to the BC Rail 5 chime horn. The default bell is the bronze bell. Add 64 to CV48 to change to the Graham White E-Bell. Press F16 to blast the introduction music from CBC's Hockey Night in Canada 
as your dash 8 rolls down the track. If you have a DC version of the model, you can pop open the cover on the fuel tank to add a decoder of your choice if you wish to do so. In order to remove the shell, first remove the bottom of the front nose handrails and then rotate them towards the outside of the locomotive. Do the same for the rear handrails. With all four handrails out of the way, spread the shell apart at the two locations between the trucks and the fuel tank, and then the shell should unlatch and pull right off. In order to remove the fuel tank to access the bottom circuit board, you must remove the 8 screws holding the weight to the underframe. Then lift the weight up away from the underframe. You will see that the fuel tank is held on by 4 tabs. Push these tabs towards the center of the locomotive and the fuel tank should come off. This is the shell of the locomotive. The dynamic brake intakes on the shell is a separately applied plastic see-through part. Be aware that this part may come loose during shipping and you may have to glue it back in place. There are no other see-through parts on the model. The cab interior can be removed if you wish to install crew figures. This is the chassis of the locomotive. The trucks look pretty good. They have separately applied brake lines and brake cylinders, but otherwise it is a one-piece injection molded plastic part and it does not have much depth to it. The steps of the locomotive are solid plastic and they are not separately applied parts. The chassis holds the top circuit board, which has connections to the track pickups the lights, the motor, and speakers. The motor is hidden under the circuit board. It is the same motor used on other Rapido locomotives, which is pretty good quality. There are two iPhone speakers in the locomotive. One is in front of the circuit board, and one is behind it. A ribbon cable sticks out of the top circuit board, and it goes to the bottom circuit board. The bottom circuit board contains the 21-pin MTC plug for the DCC decoder. It is notable that the ESU Log Sound Select decoder does not sit flush on the bottom circuit board, which is a little concerning. The bottom circuit board has four massive pads for soldering the rock lights on the BC rail units. There are no provisions for adding any other lighting functions on either circuit board. This is the only plastic ready to run model of the GE C40 8M on the market. Before November 2017, if you wanted an HO scale model of the C40-8M, your options were buying an overland brass model, which is very expensive, or to build a castle resting kit, which requires considerable skill, consumes a lot of time, and it also may be quite expensive depending on how you are approaching it. Rapido's model fills a gap in the void, although it turned out to be a budget model, which is less costly than a typical Rapido model and has much less details out of the box. What I like about this model is the value that it provides. For about $100 less than a regular Rapido model, this C40-AM still comes in with a good amount of details pre-installed, which means it's a lot better than similar offerings from other budget brands such as Backman, Athen Ready to Roll, and Walther's Mainline. The model is a really good rendition of the real Canadian Dash 8, unlike some other models which are often based on tooling that are decades old. The model runs just as nice and smooth as top-of-the-line HO scale models that are available on the market. The factory ESU Log Sound Select decoder provides accurate, true-to-prototype sounds, something that you won't find on a budget model from another manufacturer as of this writing. What I don't like about the model is its design. The decoder position in the fuel tank is great for those who are buying the DC model because they can add the decoder very easily. For someone like me, 
with the DCC and town model, this feature is more or less useless. It also makes it harder for those who are adding B0 rock lights, because instead of just removing the shell to install the lights, now you must remove the shell and the fuel tank. And the fuel tank is rather annoying to remove, because you have to completely separate the chassis and the underframe to take the fuel tank off. The decoder takes up space in the fuel tank, which otherwise could have been used as weight. If the fuel tank was solid metal, and there were slightly more metal on top of the chassis, this locomotive would be a lot heavier, and be a better puller than it already is. Improvements in pulling power is always good to have. In addition, there are no provisions on the circuit boards for the unused lighting functions of the DCC decoder, which makes adding extra lights very difficult for the modeler. The rear coupler being too low causes operational problems. Finally, many of the BC Rail specific features, such as the rock lights, front door window, radiator, and rear headlights, are either omitted completely or require user installation, which is something you should consider if you want to pick up a BC Rail model. My final verdict for the model is 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching my review of the Rapido HO Scale General Electric C40-8M locomotive. If you have found this video helpful and informative, please hit the like button. If you have questions or suggestions for me, please leave a comment and I will respond to the best of my abilities. Subscribe to my channel if you wish to receive updates on new videos. As of November 2017, this YouTube channel is monetized. This means that when you watch my videos, an advertisement may run before the video starts or during the video. These advertisements are provided by Google AdSense, and I am not affiliated with any of the advertisers. However, every time you watch an ad, I receive a small amount of money from YouTube. It will be an incentive to keep the quality of the content on this channel at an adequate quality level that you would expect from me. This money will also be used to fund special video projects that require more than just my personal time. I will also use it to fund contests and giveaways when the amount of money becomes large enough in the future. This way I am also giving back to the community and promoting the hobby at the same time.